Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger, his family, his companions And those who follow them until the end of times Welcome to lesson number 299 of Tafsirul Jalalain Alhamdulillah in our last lesson we completed Surah Al-Ghashiyah Surah Al-Fajr and Surah Al-Balad. So inshallah today we're going to be starting with Surah Al-Shams. Al-Shams is the 91st Surah of the Qur'an and it's made up of 15 verses. It has been given the title Al-Shams because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the Surah by taking an oath by the sun that illuminates the sky. Um, it's a relatively short Meccan Surah and according to some of the Mufassirun, it's the 26th surah to be revealed after Surah Al-Qadr and before Surah Al-Buruj. The main objective of this surah is Targheeb and Tarheeb. Targheeb to encourage people to do good things, to encourage people to have Iman and believe and righteous deeds. Tarheeb to create a sense of fear within their hearts. Encouragement towards obedience and warning against disobedience. And just like many other chapters in this juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by taking a series of seven oaths by His own marvelous creations. And these oaths are taken to give emphasis. Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by in this surah, the sun, moon, sky, earth, and human souls are among the greatest creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فأنهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذب ثمود بتغواها إذ بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف عقباها قال الإمام جلال الدين المحلي رحمه الله تعالى سورة الشمس مكية خمس عشرة آية سورة الشمس is a Meccan surah made up of 15 verses بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم with the name of Allah, the most merciful, the very merciful, وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا ضَوْئِهَا By the sun and its brightness. By the sun and its light. وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا And the moon as it follows it. تَبِعَهَا طَالِعًا عِنْدَ غُرُوبِهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا And by the moon, as it follows it, as it follows the sun, tabi'aha, as it follows the sun, tari'an, appearing, inda ghurubiha, appearing at the time of its setting. That as soon as the sun sets, the moon appears. Wannahari idha jallaha, and the day as it unveils it, birtifa'ihi. So I swear by the day as it unveils and uncovers the sun because as the as the day progresses as the day progresses the sun continues to rise birtifa'ihi and as the sun rises it literally becomes unveiled it becomes apparent wal-layli idha yaghshaha and by the night as it conceals it yughattiha bi dhulmatihi and by the night as it conceals it, as it covers it with its darkness. وَإِذَا The word إِذَا يعني إِذَا تَلَاهَا إِذَا جَلَّاهَا إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا 
في الثلاثة لمجرد الظرفية It's only an adverb When, when, when It's not conditional والعامل فيها فعل القسم And the governing um, agent for these ظروف The governing agent for these adverbs Is the فعل القسم يعني أقسم right. والسماء وما بناها And by the sky And the one who built it والأرض وما طحاها بسطها And by the earth And the one who spread it out ونفس وما سواها And by the soul And the one who fashioned it And shaped it ونفس بمعنى نفوس By human souls وما meaning من سواها And the one who fashioned them في الخلقة In terms of creation وما في الثلاثة And he's saying the word ما يعني وما بناها وما طحاها وما سواها مصدرية It's either مصدرية أو بمعنى من Or it means من And that is the position it seems of most of the مفسرون That it means من Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Is essentially taking an oath by himself فألهمها فجورها وتقواها Then he inspired it فَأَلْهَمَهَا Then, he meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the souls. فُجُورَهَا With its wrong. وَتَقْوَاهَا And its right. بَيَّنَ لَهَا طَرِيقَيِّ الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained and clarified for the souls both paths. The two paths. There's only two paths we can take in this world. One leads to paradise. And that is taqwa, and one leads to hellfire, which is fujur. Al khayri wa shar, good and bad. Wa ukhira taqwa, riayatan li ru'us al ayi. Then Imam Mahali says that look, why didn't Allah subhanahu wa taala mention taqwa first? Right? Why did he mention taqwa first? Why is it being mentioned second? When taqwa is what's important, he says to maintain. The ending of the verses, so they match. So waha taqwaha. That's one plausible explanation. Wa jawabul qasmi, and the response of the oaths. The reason why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is taking these series of oaths. The reason why He swears by the sun and its light, and the moon as it follows it, and the day and the night, and the sky and the earth, right? And the one who created the sky and the one who spread out the earth, etc. Why? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Successful indeed is the one who purifies their soul. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ He says, حُذِفَتْ مِنْهُ اللَّامْ لِطُولِ الْكَلَامِ It should have been لَقَدْ But because the speech has become long, for the sake of more brevity, I guess, the lam is omitted. يعني مَنْ زَكَّاهَا طَهَّرَهَا مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ Successful indeed. Is the one who purifies their souls from sin. وَقَدْ خَابَ خَسِرَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَ And doomed is the one who corrupts it. وَقَدْ خَابَ خَسِرَ That person has lost. مَنْ دَسَّاهَ Who corrupts it. أَخْفَاهَا بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ Who conceals their soul with disobedience. وَأَصْلُهُ يعني The original uh, form or construction was dasasaha. Ubdilat sin thaniyati alifan. The second scene was changed into an alif, takhfifan, to make it easier to pronounce. Kadhaba thamud bi taqwaha. Now, this is a practical example of someone who know the path of taqwa, which is uh, Salih, the Prophet, and those who took the path of fujur, which is the people of thamud. It's a practical example of قَدْ أَفْلُحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَ Which is Salih alayhi salam وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَ Which is the people of Thamud. So كَذَّبَ ثَمُودُ بِتَغْوَاهَ Thamud rejected the truth out of arrogance. كَذَّبَ ثَمُودُ رَسُولُهَا رَسُولَهَا صَالِحًا Thamud rejected and denied its messenger Salih alayhi salam بِتَغْوَاهَا بِسَبَبِ تُغْيَانِهَا Because of their تُغْيَان Because of their disobedience and their arrogance and their sins and their 
oppression and injustice. When the most wicked of them was roused, when he was incited to kill the Shim camel. When the most wicked of them hastened, right? Hastened to do what? To kill the she camel. Wasmuhu Qudarun. His name is given and mentioned as Qudar. And he, what did he rush rush towards and what did he hasten towards? Ila He rushed and hastened towards hamstringing, meaning killing the she camel, slaughtering the she camel, biridahum, but with his community's consent and agreement. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقْيَاهَا But the Messenger of Allah Salih السلام, warned them, Do not disturb Allah's camel and her turn to drink. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَالِحٌ So the Messenger of Allah, meaning Salih السلام, said to them, نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ The she-camel of Allah. اَيْذَرُوهَا Leave it alone. Don't bother it, don't harass it, don't inconvenience it. وَسُقْيَاهَا And it's turned to drink. وَشِرْبَهَا فِي يَوْمِهَا And it's turned to drink on its day. Leave it alone. Don't harass it, don't bother it, don't disturb it. وَكَانَ لَهَا يَوْمٌ وَلَهُمْ يَوْمٌ And the she-camel had one day to drink, and they had one day to drink. فَكَذَّبُوهُ But they defied him. فِي قَوْلِهِ ذَلِكَ عَنِ اللَّهِ Right, they they belied him, they denied him that statement of his from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al Muratabi Anehi Nuzulun Adabihim that resulted in punishment then coming upon them. In Khalafuhu if they went against it. Fa'aqaruha. So they slaughtered it. They slaughtered the she camel. Qataluha. Right, they killed the she camel. Liyaslama nahum ma ushirbiha. So that they could have the water of its day to drink as well. For not a big reason. So their Lord crushed them for their crime, leveling all to the ground. So their Lord sent down upon them and he crushed them because of their sin. فَسَوَّاهَا And that crushing punishment leveled them to the ground. أي الدمدمت عليهم أي عمهم بها Meaning this punishment of the damdama, right? It, it, it basically encompassed all of them. فَنَمْ يُفْلِتْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدٌ None of them were able to escape from it. وَلَا بِالْوَاوِ وَالْفَاعِيَ يعني وَلَا أُرْفَنَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَاهَا He has no fear of consequences. يعني وَلَا يَخَافُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عُقْبَاهَا تَبِعَتَهَا And that brings us to the end of Surah Al-Shams. The next Surah is Surah Al-Layl. Now Surah Al-Layl is the 92nd Surah of the Qur'an and it is made up of 21 verses. It's been given the title Al-Layl the night because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah by taking an oath by the night when it covers. Um, it's a relatively short Meccan surah. It's considered to be the ninth surah revealed after surah al-a'la and before surah al-fajr. So it's very early Meccan revelation and it's very emotive and it's very effective. The style of the surah captures the attention of the listener and the theme of the surah revolves around the effort and actions of man in this world and the consequences of those actions in the next. So its main purpose is also targheeb and targheeb. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wallayni idha yagusha wan nahali idha tajalla wa ma khalaqa dhakara wal untha إن سعيكم لشتى فأما من أعطى واتقى وصدق بالحسنى فسنيسره لليسرى وأما من بخل واستغنى وكذب بالحسنى 
فسنيسره للعسرى وما يغني عنه ماله إذا تردى إن علينا للهدى وإن لنا للآخرة والأولى فأنذرتكم نارا تلظى لا يصلاها إلا الأشقى الذي كذب وتولى وسيجنبها الأتقى الذي يؤتي ما له يتزكى وما لأحد عنده من نعمة تجزى إلا ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى ولسوف يرضى قال رحمه الله سورة الليل مكية وهي إحدى وعشرون آية سورة الليل or سورة والليل is a مكن سورة and it is made up of 21 verses بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم with the name of Allah the most merciful the very merciful والليل إذا يغشى بظلمته كل ما بين السماء والأرض والليل إذا يغشى by the night when it covers by the night when it covers with its darkness everything between the sky and the earth so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah by taking an oath by the night when it covers everything between the sky and the earth with its darkness and the day when it shines Allah then swears by the day when it shines and becomes apparent and he says the word إِذَا فِي الْمَوْضِعِينَ لِمُجَرَّدِ الدَّرْفِيَّةِ Again, the, the word إِذَا in verse number 1 and verse number 2 is simply an adverb. When. It's not like a conditional statement. وَالْعَامِلُ فِيهَا فِعْلُ الْقَسْمِ And the governing agent for these ظروف, for these adverbs, is the fi'l of the qasm. يعني أقسم. وَمَا بِمَعْنَى مَنْ أو مصدرية خلق الذكر والأنثى and by the one who created the male and the female meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says وما means من or it could be مصدرية يعني and I swear by the one who created the male and the female Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by himself and who is the male and the female آدم the one who created the male and the female could be general, all males and all females, or Adam and Hawa. Oh, kulla dhakarin wa kulla untha, or every male and every female. Wal khuntha al mushkilu indana. Now, Imam al Mahalli says that look, from this verse, we are learning and we understand that there's only two genders you have male and you have female. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that's what he has created. Everything that's created is male or female in terms of human beings. There's no third gender. And so he says, وَالْخُنْثَ الْمُشْكِنُ right? Al-khuntha um, is referring to someone who is uh, an hermaphrodite. Um, I, I, I forgot what the, what the, what the more uh, appropriate term for this is. But it's someone who's born uh, with both uh, reproductive organs they are born with both a male and a female reproductive organ and it's called al khuntha mushkin because initially it's a little bit difficult to uh, determine if this child is male or female and the fuqaha they come up with uh, these methods and these ways of determining uh, if that child is going to be a male or female depending on which organ is dominant and which organ actually functions etc there's other ways عندنا. and once that determination is made then that child is classified as either a male or a female so he's saying Imam al-Mahalli وَالْخُنْثَ الْمُشْكِلُ عِنْدَنَا that according to us as human beings from our perspective it's difficult to decide and determine because this child has both reproductive parts but According to Allah, ذَكَرٌ أَوْ أُنْثَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَعَانَى According to Allah, it's only one. It's either a male or a female. 
فيحنث بتكليمه من حلف لا يكلم ذكرا ولا أنثى. And that is why a person who swears that they will not speak to a man or a woman, that they will not speak to a man or a woman, a male or a female, will break their oath if they speak to a khuntha. Because that khuntha is either a male or a female. Now that is, you know, a side point that Imam al Halni uh, chooses to bring here. Otherwise, the meaning of the verse is clear. وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى And by the one who created the male and the female. إِنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَتَّى Surely, the ends you strive for are diverse. And this is the جَوَابُ الْقَسَمْ right? This is the reason why these oaths are being taken. That I swear by all of these things, that your efforts are diverse. إِنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ عَمَلَكُمْ Truly your efforts, your deeds, لَشَتَّى are diverse. مُخْتَلِفٌ are different. فَعَامِلٌ لِلْجَنَّةِ بِالطَّاعَةِ So you have one who works and strives for paradise through obedience. وَعَامِلٌ لِلْنَادِ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ And another person works and strives and puts effort for hellfire. Through disobedience. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى As for the one who gives in charity. وَاتَّقَى And is mindful of Allah. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى حَقَّ اللَّهِ تَعَانَى And as for the one who has given the right of Allah. وَاتَّقَى اللَّهَ And is conscious, mindful, and aware of Allah. وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى and firmly believes in the finest reward. A, bila ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And that is one of the more common interpretations of what al husna here means. Wasaddaqa bil husna. And believes in the kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, fil mawdi'in. Yani the word al husna in both instances in this surah is referring to the kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So this person who gives the right of God in terms of charity and who is mindful and conscious of Allah and who believes in the kalima فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We will facilitate for them the way of ease. We will make easy for them the way of ease. نُهَيِّئُهُ We will facilitate for them, make easy for them, prepare them لِلْيُسْرَى for the way of ease, lil jannah, for paradise. So here, Imam al mahalli rahimullah, he is saying the word al yusra means jannah. That whoever has these sifat, whoever has these qualities, that aata haqq Allah, they give the right of Allah. Wattaqa, and they are mindful and conscious of Allah, and they believe in the kani mana ilaha illallah, then we will facilitate for them the way to paradise. We will make the way to paradise, the way to Jannah, easy for that person. Then Allah tells us about the opposite. مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى And as for the one who is stingy and indifferent to Allah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ بِحَقِّ اللَّهِ And as for the one who is stingy with the right of God. وَاسْتَغْنَى عَنْ ثَوَابِهِ And feels like they don't need his reward. وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى and they deny the kalima. فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى Then we will facilitate for them the path of difficulty, the path of hardship. نُهَيِّئُهُ We will make easy for them, we will facilitate for them the path of hardship. And Imam Mahali says, عُسْرَى means النَّارِ Hellfire. So the one who is a bakhil, the one who is miserly and stingy, and does not give the right of Allah وَاسْتَغْنَى meaning they don't have taqwa and they're not concerned about God's rewards and they deny and reject the kalima then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate the path to hellfire for them وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ إِذَا تردى. and their wealth will be of no benefit to them when they fall and tumble into hellfire 
وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ He says, مَا here is نَافِيَةٌ Negation. His wealth will be of no benefit to him إِذَا تَرَدَّى فِي النَّارِ When they tumble and fall into hellfire. إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا لَلْهُدَى It is certainly upon us alone to show the way of guidance. لِتَبِينَ لِتَبِينَ طَرِيقِ الْهُدَى مِنْ طَرِيقِ الضَّلَانِ لِتَ لِتَبِينَ لَتَبِينَ نعم right. Certainly upon us is clarifying and distinguishing the path of guidance from the path of misguidance. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that is His uh, responsibility as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord and Creator. It is certainly upon us to show the way to guidance, meaning to clarify the path of guidance from the path of misguidance. لِيُمْتَثَنَ أَمْرُنَا بِسُلُوكِ الْأَوَّلِ وَنَهْيُنَا عَنِ ارْتِكَابِ الثَّانِي لِيُمْتَثَنَ أَمْرُنَا So that our command will be obeyed and followed. By following the first, meaning by following the path of guidance. And so that our prohibitions will be uh, also obeyed. Right? And that will prevent them from following the uh, path of dalan, the path of misguidance. And surely to us alone belong this life and the next. Now here Imam al Mahali says, Ula uh, means a dunya. فَمَنْ طَلَبَهُمَا مِنْ غَيْرِنَا فَقَدْ أَخْطَأَ So whoever seeks either of them, whoever seeks the akhirah or the ula, whoever seeks the akhirah or the dunya from anyone other than us, فَقَدْ أَخْطَأَ They have made a mistake. فَأَنْذَرْتُكُمْ نَارًا تَلَظَى And so I have warned you of a raging fire. فَأَنذَرْتُكُمْ خَوَّفْتُكُمْ يَا أَهْلَ مَكَّةً O people of Mecca, I have warned you and I have threatened you about نَارًا تَلَظَى A raging fire بِحَذْفِ إِحْدَى التَّائَيْنِ مِنَ الْأَصْلِ يعني It was actually تَتَلَظَى وَقُرِئَ بِثُبُوتِهَا And that is one of the قراءات أي تتوقد That is burning and raging and blazing لَا يَصْلَاهَا يَدْخُلُهَا إِلَّا الْأَشْقَى in which no one will enter except the most wretched. بِمَعْنَى الشَّقِي Meaning, the unfortunate person. A person as misfortune, the shaqi, will enter into hellfire. الَّذِي كَذَّبَ النَّبِيَّ وَتَوَلَّى عَنِ الْإِيمَانِ The one who denied the Prophet, right? the one who denied the Prophet and turned away from iman, turned away from faith. وَهَذَا الْحَصْرُ مُؤَوَّنٌ Right, and this uh, limitation and limiting to the ashqa is interpreted because obviously not only the ashqa will go to hellfire, but all the non-believers will go there, and some of the usat, some of the disobedient believers will also enter into hellfire. And the reason why Imam Mahalli says this is to respond to the murji'a. The murji'a was a uh, group that existed in our history. Um, who had unorthodox views um, when it came to some issues of aqidah and they believed that as long as a person had iman that was enough for salvation and that doing good deeds and bad deeds didn't make a difference as long as you had iman you'd be saved so Imam Mahali says that that's not the case because they would use this verse as a proof for their position say so, no, there's some ta'wil here, there's some interpretation لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَانَ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ because in order for people to enter into paradise, they have to have maghfira. They have to receive forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيَكُونُ murad. So what is meant here is a suliyal muabbad Is entering into hellfire for eternity. Meaning those who will enter into hellfire for eternity are the ashqa, are the non-believers. As for the believers, then some of them, may Allah protect us, will end up in hellfire for a period of time, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower them with His grace, His mercy, pardon, and forgiveness, 
and they will be removed from hellfire and admitted into Jannah. وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى But the righteous, meaning the most righteous, will be spared from it, will be saved from it. يُبْعَدُ عَنْهَا الْأَتْقَى Will be distanced from it. بِمَعْنَى أَتَّقِي says أَتْقَى means أَتَّقِي and the person of God consciousness. الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَالَهُ يَتَزَكَّى The one who gives his wealth to purify himself. And they say this is referring to Abu Bakr As a matter of fact, all the Mufassirun say this is referring to or these verses are referring to Abu Bakr Highlighting his status, highlighting his virtue The one who gives his wealth and he who gives in charity In order to purify himself مُتَزَكِّيًا بِهِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بأن يخرجه لله تعالى لا رياء ولا سمعة فيكون زاكيا عند الله تعالى وهذا نزل في الصديق رضي الله عنه لما اشترى بلالا المعذب على إيمانه وأعتقه فقال الكفار إنما فعل ذلك ليد كانت له عنده فنزل وما لأحد عنده من نعمة تجزى إلا لكن فعل ذلك ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى أي طلب ثواب الله ولسوف يرضى بما يعطى من الثواب في الجنة والآية تشمل من فعل مثل فعله فيبعد عن النار ويثاب So again these last verses of Surah Al-Layl are a reference to Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه وسيجنبها الأتقى but the righteous, meaning the most righteous, the person who has the most taqwa, meaning the person of God consciousness, will be saved and will be spared from it, meaning from hellfire. Who is he? The one who gives his wealth, the one who donates his wealth only to purify himself. Mutazakkiyan bihi, indallahi ta'ala. And he purifying himself through it. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? Bi an yukhrijahu lillahi ta'ala. By spending it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La riya'an. Not out of ostentation. Wala sum'atan or to show off. Fayakunu zakiyan inda Allah. So he will be purified according to Allah. Wa hadha nazala fi siddiq. And this was revealed regarding a siddiq Abu Bakr radiallahu an. When he purchased Bilal. Who was being tortured and, per, uh, and, and persecuted because of his iman, so he freed him. Right? Abu Bakr radiallahu an saw that Bilal was being radiallahu an was being tortured by his owner Umayyah. So Abu Bakr radiallahu an purchased him and purchased his freedom. Faqal al kuffar and when he did that, the kuffar came up with this absurd claim that inna ma dalik that the reason why. He freed and purchased Bilal radiallahu an liyadin kanat lahu indahu because of some sort of favor that Bilal did to him. That he owed Bilal a favor radiallahu an. And because of that, he purchased him and set him free. Allah saying, no, that's not why he spent money. He did what? Yatazakka. Only to purify himself. Wama li ahadin indahu min ni'matin tujza. Not in return for someone's favors. لكن فعل ذلك however he did it ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى but seeking right however he did that meaning he purchased Bilal رضي الله عنه seeking the pleasure of his Lord the Most High أي طلب ثواب الله seeking the reward reward of Allah سبحانه وتعالى ولا سوف يرضى and he will certainly be pleased بما يعطى من الثواب في الجنة and he will definitely, he will certainly be pleased with the reward he will be given in paradise. And the verse includes anyone who does something similar. That although the verse and the verses are speaking about Abu Bakr radiallahu an, they also include anyone who does something similar. فَيُبْعَدُ عَنِ النَّارِ So they too will also be distanced and kept far away from hellfire 
وَيُثَابُ And they too will be rewarded. And that brings us to the end of Surah Al-Layl. The next Surah is Surah Al-Duha, which is the 93rd Surah of the Qur'an, and it is made up of 11 verses. Now it's been given the name of duha because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah by taking an oath by the morning hours when the sun rises and its rays start to spread across the horizon. It's also a relatively short Meccan surah and it is considered to be the 11th surah revealed after surah al-fajr and before surah al-inshirah. So it's very early revelation and it was revealed in defense of the Prophet ﷺ as a means to console, comfort, and reassure him. So the main objective, the main purpose of the surah is to defend the Prophet ﷺ against the lies of the leaders of Quraysh. It also reminds the Prophet ﷺ that what is to come in the hereafter is far better than whatever is in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds the Prophet ﷺ of some specific favors and blessings that have been bestowed upon him to highlight his status and his rank and also to remind him to show gratitude. So this surah, Surah Al-Duha, is essentially dedicated to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wal-Duha Wal-Layli Iza Saja Ma Wadda'aka Rabbuka Wa Ma Qala وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِنًا فَأَغْنَى فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِنَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ قَالَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ سُورَةُ الدُّحَى مَكِّيَّةٌ إِحْدَى عَشْرَةَ آيَةً سُورَةُ الدُّحَى أو سورة والضحى مَكِّيَّةٌ is a Meccan surah made up of 11 verses وَلَمَّا نَزَلَتْ كَبَّرَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَسَلَمْ آخِرَهَا And when it was revealed the Prophet والسلام, said Allahu Akbar when it ended. Meaning after completing Surah Al-Duha, the Prophet وسلم, said Allahu Akbar. فَسُنَّ التَّكْبِيرُ آخِرَهَا And because of that, it is a sunnah to say Allahu Akbar at the end of this surah. That after reciting Surah Al-Duha, it is considered to be a sunnah to say Allahu Akbar. وَرُوِيَ الْأَمْرُ بِهِ خَاتِمَتَهَا وَخَاتِمَتَ كُلِّ سُورَةٍ بَعْدَهَا And the, the, the command to say Allahu Akbar, the command to say Takbir at the end of Surah Al-Duha and at the end of every surah after it has also been narrated. So that's also considered to be a practice, a sunnah. It's something uh, that is encouraged that after reciting Surah Al-Duha, we say Allahu Akbar, and we should also say it after um, all of the surahs until the end of the juz, until Surah Al-Nas. And wahua Allahu Akbar. And what is meant by takbir here is to say Allahu Akbar or La ilaha illa Allahu wallahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim with the name of Allah, the most merciful, the very merciful. Wadduha a awwal in nahari. أو كله والضحى by the morning sunlight meaning أول النهار the beginning part of the day I swear by the morning sunlight meaning the first part of the day أو كله or it could be the entire day والليل إذا سجى and the night when it falls still غطى بظنامه and I swear by the night, when it covers everything with its darkness, O Sakana, when it becomes still. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qana. This is the jawab al qasim. This is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath at the beginning of the surah. That your Lord, O Prophet sallallahu has not abandoned you 
nor has he become hateful of you, nor has he forsaken you. ما ودعك ربك تركك يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Your Lord, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, has not abandoned you, has not left you. وما قال nor is he upset with you. أب غضك nor is he angry or upset with you. نزل هذا لما قال الكفار. Right, this was revealed when the non-believer said. عند تأخر الوحي عنه خمسة عشر يوما إن ربه ودعه وقلاه يعني when revelation was delayed for about 15 days the non-believers of Mecca said and claimed and taunted that his Lord has abandoned him and is upset with him so in response Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ما ودعك ربك وما قلاه your Lord, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has not abandoned you. He has not left you. Nor is he upset or angry with you. And the next life is certainly far better for you than this one. Right? And the next life is certainly far better for you than this one. لما فيها من الكرامات لك because of all of the honor and all of the karama that is there for you in paradise all of the blessings and favors and you know generosity and nobility and honor you're going to be given من الأولى than this world meaning the dunya ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى and surely your Lord will give so much to you that you will be pleased. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And your Lord will give you so much in the hereafter. مِنَ الْخَيْرَاتِ In terms of good things. عَطَاءً جَزِيلًا Abundantly. فَتَرْضَى بِي And you will be pleased with it. فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So when he heard this, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَنْ لَا أَرْضَى If that's the case, then I will not be pleased and I will not be content while one person from my ummah is in the fire. إلى هنا تم جواب القسم بمثبتين بعد منفيين. He says here is where the جواب القسم is now complete after two affirmative statements after two negative statements. يعني ما ودعك ربك وما قال ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى This entire thing according to Imam Mahalli is the jawab of Qasim. The jawab of Qasim has two manfis, yani مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى and has two muthbit statements. Yani وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى Did he not find you as an orphan, then shelter you? أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ Istifhamu taqreerin This is a rhetorical question uh, For the sake of confirmation For the sake of affirmation A. Wajadaka yatiman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found you As an orphan Bifaqti abika qabla wiladatik Because you had lost your father Before you were born Oh, ba'daha or a short time after There are two opinions amongst the scholars of seerah But most say that His father passed away before he was فآوى and we sheltered you بأن ضمك إلى عمك أبي طالب by placing you uh, in the care of your uncle أبو طالب ووجدك ضالا فهدا and did he not find you unguided then guide you ووجدك ضالا عما أنت عليه الآن من الشريعة that you were away from what you are upon right now in terms of the sharia fahada and so we guided you hadaka ilayha we guided you towards it wa wajadaka ailan faaghna and did he not find you needy and then satisfied your needs faqiran did he not find you needy faaghna aghnaka that he made you uh, he satisfied your needs aghnaka bima qanna'aka bihi Right, he, he 
enriched you and he satisfied you with what makes you content in terms of ghanim and other things and you know, the Prophet was not wealthy so Imam Mahalli is highlighting that this doesn't mean he was given money this doesn't mean he was given material wealth and possessions and material things or a lot of wealth and that's why he quotes the hadith وفي الحديث ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرض that true wealth does not come from having a lot of material possessions ولكن الغنى غنى النفس but true wealth is wealth of the soul meaning contentment true wealth, real wealth is contentment so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying we have made you content you have qana'a فَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرُ so do not oppress the orphan بِأَخْذِ مَالِهِ أَوْ غَيْرِ ذَلِكْ by taking his wealth or anything else وَأَمَّ السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرُ and do not repulse the beggar يعني تَسْجُرْهُ لِفَقْرِهِ right don't push them away and don't reprimand them for their poverty وَأَمَّ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكْ فَحَدِّثْ and proclaim the blessings of your Lord and ask for the blessings of your Lord فَحَدِّثْ proclaim them speak about them يعني وَأَمَّ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَلِكْ and ask for the favor and blessing of your Lord upon you with prophethood and other things فَحَدِّثْ then inform أَخْبِرْ وَحُذِفَ ضَمِيرُهُ صَصَلًا فِي بَعْضِ الْأَفْعَانِ رِعَايَةً لِلْفَوَاصِلِ and the pronoun for the Prophet ﷺ has been omitted in some of these verbs uh, in order to maintain the ending of the verses. So this is actually a very, very deep surah. Very deep, very profound surah speaking about some very powerful realities. Highlighting how much love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had for the Prophet ﷺ. That he revealed Qur'an consoling and comforting him, reassuring him. When the mushrikun were mocking him and making fun of him and ridiculing him and taunting him by saying that your Lord has abandoned you and your Lord has left you and he's upset with you and he's angry in you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, No, ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. Your Lord has not left you. Your Lord is not angry with you. That is not the case. And on top of that, just like we've never left you and we're not angry at you, we will constantly, constantly shower you with favors and blessings. Not only in this world, but more importantly, in the world to come. And the world to come is far better than the life of this world. The hereafter is far better for you than the life of this world. Or it means what comes in the future is going to be much better for you than what has happened in the past. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ And your Lord will give you and give you and give you so much فَتَرْضَى That you will be totally content and satisfied and pleased. And as proof of this, Allah mentions blessings and favors that He had given him in the past. That you were an orphan and we provided you shelter and you were taken care of. You were not upon the deen of Islam and the sharia of Islam and we guided you towards it. Right. You were poor and we gave you wealth, meaning in terms of contentment. So now express gratitude for these blessings. That, you know, do not, uh, do not be uh, unjust towards the orphan and do not be rough with the orphans. Do not oppress the orphans. Do not repress the beggars and proclaim the blessings of your Lord. All right, that brings us to the end of uh, Surah Al-Duha. The next Surah is Surah Al-Inshirah which is also known as Surah Alam Nashrah and it's also known as Surah Al-Sharh so Al-Sharh is the 94th Surah of the Quran and it's also a short Meccan Surah made up of just 8 verses and it's been given the title Al-Sharh because the verb derived from this word which is Sharah Yashrahu is mentioned in the first verse Alam Nashrah Naka Salak have we not uplifted your heart for you, O Prophet? Or did we not expand your chest for you, O Prophet? And it's also been called Surah Alam Nashrah. And it's also known as Surah Al-Inshirah. And some of the Mufassirun mention that it is the 12th Surah to be revealed right after Surah Al-Duha. And that is why their style and subject matter is very similar. It's very closely related. It's almost as if Surah Al-Sharh 
is a continuation of Surah Al-Duha. It mentions some of the other favors and blessings that were bestowed upon the Prophet ﷺ. And it gives glad tidings of ease and comfort in the near future. As a matter of fact, uh, most of the remaining surahs deal with divine favors given to the Prophet ﷺ. And the main subject matter of this surah is the Prophet ﷺ. And its purpose is to console, comfort, and reassure the Prophet ﷺ and to give glad tidings. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب قال رحمه الله Surah Alam Nashrah Makiyatun Famanu Ayatin. Surah Alam Nashrah is a Meccan surah made up of eight verses. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim with the name of Allah the Most Merciful, the Very Merciful. Alam Nashrah Istifhamu Taqreerin A. Sharah Na Laka Ya Muhammadu Sallallahu Alayhi Wasallam Sadraka Bin Nubuwati Wa Gayriha. Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. Have we not uplifted your heart for you, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Have we not opened your chest for you? Have we not expanded your breast for you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And this can convey several different layers of meanings. This can have several different connotations. And here Imam Al-Mahali just mentions one. Alam Nashrah, he says first and foremost is istifhamu taqreerin. It is a rhetorical question for the sake of confirmation, for the sake of affirmation, meaning sharahna, that we expanded, we uplifted. Laka, for you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sadaraka, your chest, meaning your heart, with prophethood and other things. We expanded your breast, we uplifted your heart, we expanded your chest, by giving you the ability to carry this very, very heavy responsibility of prophethood and messengership. We gave you the internal strength and qualities required to convey the message, to invite people towards the truth. And, you know, for, to, we opened your heart to knowledge and guidance and patience and perseverance and tawakkul and all of these things. And some commentators mention this is referring to the fact uh, when the Prophet's uh, heart was, you know, his chest was physically opened and his heart was washed. Right? And we have relieved you of the burden. We have relieved the burden from you. Which weighed so heavily on your back. Meaning this responsibility initially seemed very heavy. But we made it easy for you. وَهَذَا كَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ And this is similar uh, to Allah's statement. That, so that we can, uh, so that Allah can forgive whatever sins you have done previously. He had not done any sins. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And we elevated your mention for you. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And we elevated your renown. We elevated your mention for you. How? بِأَن تُذْكَرَ مَعَ ذِكْرِي That you will be mentioned along with my mention. In the adhan, فِي الْأَذَانِ وَالْإِقَامَةِ وَالْتَشَهُدِ وَالْخُطْبَةِ وَغَيْرِهَا in the adhan, the iqama, the tashahud, tashahud, in sermons and other things as well. Whenever Allah is mentioned, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is mentioned as well. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Fa'inna ma'al usri yusra. So surely with hardship comes ease. Inna ma'al usri yusran. Surely with that hardship comes even more ease. So, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ الشِدَّةِ 
So surely with hardship, with difficulty, yusran is ease, suhulatan, relief. Inna ma'al usri yusran. And surely with that same hardship, because it's ma'rifah. So according to the grammarians and according to mufassirun, the word al-usr is referring to the same difficulty, the same hardship. And the word yusran is nakira both times. It's indefinite. So it's referring to two different instances of ease. So surely with that hardship comes more ease. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qasa min al-kuffari shiddatan And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam endured and experienced hardships and difficulties from the non-believers. ثُمَّ حَصَلَ لَهُ الْيُسْرُ بِنُصْرِهِ عَلَيْهِمْ But then ease, right? Then he, then he attained ease by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping him against them. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ فَانْصَمْ اِتْعَبْ فِي الدُّعَى So once you have fulfilled your duty, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ once you have completed your prayer, fansab, strive in devotion. It'ab fi dua, strive in supplication. Wa ila rabbika farghab, and turn to your Lord with hope. Tadarra, and he turn to your Lord uh, with hope and humility. And that brings us to the end of Surah Al Sharh. Again, it's a very deep and profound surah. Imam Mahalli explains it in a very brief, succinct, and concise manner. So alhamdulillah we'll stop here for today. Uh, we have reached the end of Surah al -Sharh. So from tomorrow or in tomorrow's lesson we will start with Surah al -Teen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this effort of ours. May He place it on our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a means of increasing our understanding of the Quran. May Allah give all of us the tawfiq, the ability to implement the guidance and teachings of the Quran into our daily lives. وصلى الله هم على نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.